Dr. DeForest Soares is a leader who stirs up energy, who looks in non-traditional places for answers to traditional problems. He expects results and gets them. Described as passionate, controversial, inspiring, savvy, and innovative, Soares relishes challenges and brings all of those attributes and more to issues he addresses. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Almighty Debt, a Black in America special. I'm Soledad O'Brien. Your divorced Buster Soares was the Secretary of State of New Jersey from 1999 until 2002 under Republican Governor Christy Todd Whitman. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Following his stint as New Jersey Secretary of State, where he managed a $35 million budget and a staff of 200, Soares was appointed chairman of the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, an independent bipartisan commission established by former President George Bush. Building upon his leadership skills and financial expertise, Soares moved into the corporate world, becoming an independent board director for Federal Home Loan Bank of New York and also an independent board director for Independence Realty Trust and Independence Mortgage Trust in Philadelphia. Sori's experience and skills in creating change, along with his growing concern about the financial health of America, led him to author his top-selling book, D-Free. And soon after the book, he created a workbook, 12 Steps to Financial Freedom. The book was featured in the CNN documentary, Almighty Debt. Building upon the success of his book and workbook, Soares has launched a D-Free television program on All Right TV in partnership with producer Tracy Edmonds and former BET CEO Bob Johnson. So I'd like you to join me in taking this journey towards financial freedom. If I can get out of debt, you can get out of debt. Soares is quick to point out the many implications and misconceptions about consumer debt and carries a message to both government and business on the need to address this issue. He regularly speaks on the topic, the corporate and employee imperative for financial wellness. Consumer debt is a problem on every economic level. The demographic that has the most um, pressing problem with credit card debt are women with master's degrees. We want to make it culturally preferable and popular to get out of debt rather than being popular and funny to be drowning in debt. I want to inspire consumers and companies to take seriously the need to be financially self-sufficient. We don't need a higher amount of consumer debt to keep the country going. There's a certain amount of consumption that we need, but consumption does not require debt. If I buy flat screen TV, if I buy it in cash, or if I buy it with a credit card, the fact that I bought the flat screen TV is what keeps the economy going, not the fact that I used a credit card to keep the company going. The credit card fees keep a certain sector of the banking industry going, but banks can do fine without consumers drowning in credit card debt and paying late fees. And so we do need a shift and that shift should not put the burden on the consumer to keep the country going. It's really offensive when consumers are convinced that the economy depends upon them going deeply into debt. Is debt a bigger problem than racism? Yes, debt is a bigger problem than racism. You didn't even hesitate. There's no question to me that debt is a bigger problem than racism. Being in debt is slavery. When I'm paying last month's bills with next month's check. That's slavery. When I'm writing a check hoping that it doesn't bounce, or when I pull out my credit card praying that it's not rejected, that, that I'm living in financial bondage. Sori's own appreciation and respect for education, resulting in multiple degrees from Fordham, a master's from Princeton Theological Seminary, and a doctorate degree from United Theological Seminary, has convinced him that more is needed to assure financial literacy amongst all generations. I started this program on All Right TV to reach the younger generation that's really being pulled into this culture of debt. 
The demand for Sori's leadership and innovation in financial matters extends to popular speaking engagements in corporations on financial ethics and integrity. His message, Why Smart People Do Dumb Things, is practical, provocative, and enlightening. My hypothesis around avoiding corporate scandal was this, that scandal is more cultural than it is legal, than it is administrative, than it is financial. That if we miss the cultural aspects of scandal, then what we'll do is we'll teach rules and regulations, but we won't make an impact. 